Couple tips I have when you are selling in stories. How to find your best post. How do you know what post you need to post? You know, you're getting this engagement or you're starting to see followers, but you just don't know how to convert them. Welcome back to another episode of Call Her Creator, where we help people just like you make money doing what you actually love to do. So I'm living proof that's totally attainable to leave your nine to five and go make something new online and grow your own business. So I want this podcast to inspire you to do the same thing. So in today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down six key techniques that we use here at the agency to help turn likes into actual sales. That is probably one of the biggest questions I get is, hey, I'm getting all this engagement. I've got followers. I've got likes, but nobody is buying from me. So what can I do to fix that? So we're going to go through six different things that you can try to do to help you bring in the sales. I know vanity metrics are cool. I know followers are cool. But honestly, when you make that first sale online and you prove to yourself that you can do it, it There's just something about that feeling that no one can describe, but it feels so good. So hopefully today's episode is going to help you do that. Now, before we get into the episode, I want to shout out one of our loyal listeners who gave me a great review over on Apple Podcasts, which I hope you guys will do the same if you're listening to this. Please give me a five-star review. But Courtney, the affiliate, said I met her on Instagram and she has helped me with my Instagram page a lot and she gives a ton of value and she's an awesome person to learn from, which I can attest to Courtney. I am very awesome to learn from. But thank you so much, Courtney, for that amazing review. I love you guys. So Instagram update before we get into the actual episode today. You can now see if someone followed you because of a reel. So this was always kind of in the works, I feel like for Instagram, because you can actually go into each individual post and click on insights and see a bunch of analytics about that specific post. And I do remember that some of those posts, I believe it was like carousels maybe in static images, you could see if you got a follower from that post, but for the longest time, they weren't just giving those analytics to us for reels. So I think this is a new update that they're doing. Obviously it was needed, but reels are so important over on Instagram. So this is the best way for you to really see if your Instagram reels are working, if your audience is liking what you're posting, if you're attracting people to your page. The best way for you to check that out is to go to the reel on your page. You're gonna click the three little dots and then you'll see the word insights and then you'll see profile activity. And from there, you're gonna be able to see how many followers followed you from that reel. Now, I think this is a really great feature for people who kind of want to look for patterns in their content to see what is relating better to people, what's getting them to engage, what's getting them to follow you. So this is really good insight for you as a creator to go in and check maybe on a weekly basis and just kind of see, hey, did this reel bring me in any new followers? What was I talking about in this reel? Did I do something differently? Was there specific text overlay, colors, the psychology of color? All of those things go into account when people follow you from a real. So those are the things you're going to want to do and look at whenever you are, you know, looking at this information that Instagram gives you. Make sure that you are looking for patterns in your content. All right. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode, which is turning your likes into actual sales. I think that's probably one of the hardest things that you can do on Instagram. But as soon as you do that first sale through Instagram, it just feels so good. So I want to help you guys kind of make a strategy here when it comes to selling your services or your product, maybe follow these six little guidelines and it can help you make your first sale. Or maybe you're already making sales, but they're just not, you know, as much as you'd like to be making. Again, try one of these six techniques. Techniques. It's something that we use here for our clients here at the agency. It's techniques that I use on my own profile, 166,000 followers, and it works. Okay, so step number one, you need to pay attention to your LinkedIn bio. What do you have there right now? You're making all this really great content. You're making really good carousels. You've got some good reels going on. Your content's actually performing really well but then they go to your profile and they don't know what to do next. So that's why it is super important to make sure that you are using your link in bio strategically. So every social media platform has a place to add a link in bio. You know, Instagram, TikTok, 
Facebook even has one now. Threads, Twitter, all of them. They all have a place for you to put a link there to push people to other places of you on the internet. So I like to use this real estate obviously for my stand store because I push people to my products, my services. But if you don't have something like that, if you don't even have a website yet, you can always push these people to another social media profile of yours. So you're at least cross promoting and getting people to go to your other social channels. But if I were you and you know, you're listening to this podcast episode today because you want to make money from Instagram, you want to make money being a creator. And the first step in doing that is getting a stand store and setting up your online store. So the cool thing about this, you know, a stand store is you don't have to put all this time and effort into it like you would an actual website. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still a big believer in website. But if you're first starting out and you think that's a priority, honestly, you could get away with utilizing your social media pages before you build a website. If you're low on cash or anything like that, start with your socials and then you could go get a stand store. So the stand store is cool. It's just an online pop up. When people click on the link, it pops up and you've got this little personalized profile. And the cool thing with Stan is that they do allow you to personalize it to your own branding. It's easy to make purchases. Everything happens right there. So when you click on my stand store, you'll see my face. I can put a little blurb of who I am and then I have like different products and services in there that I offer. Obviously, this is getting a little off topic, but I'm going to give you some strategy here when it comes to building up your store. You probably want to put your most important thing up at the top, near the top at least, and then play around with price points. So when I first set up my Stan store, I remember working with someone from Stan and they kind of told me what I should be doing in my store. And they had told me, put your most popular services up at the top. You're going to want like a low ticket offer and then a high ticket offer because not everyone's going to be able to afford the high ticket. So, you know, when you go onto my Stan store, I think you can see like you can join my membership, which is like low ticket, or you could book a profile audit, which is a higher ticket, or you could do full service management, which is going to be like thousands. So you got to kind of play it in hierarchy wise, you know, put your low ticket, medium ticket, high ticket, and then obviously put them in order of what they should be. Now, if you are just starting your sand store, I do recommend adding in something for a, like a lead magnet or a lead capture form. Stan has a very easy, easy to use lead capture form where you just pull the button over and it allows them to give their name and email address and then you've captured them. Now what you can do there is if you have like a lead magnet, say you maybe made like a free checklist or a free ebook in Canva, what happens there is then you kind of incentivize them to give them your email and in exchange you send them over that checklist or that ebook. Now the cool thing with Stan is that they will handle all of that for you. All you have to do is upload your freebie or your lead magnet and then Stan does all of the heavy lifting. Then if you ever want to go back in there and download your list of leads, of course, you're going to want to do that. Then you'll be able to do that from your Stan store. So Stan does a lot for you and it's pretty affordable price. So definitely check out a Stan store if you don't have one yet and utilize that link in bio real estate in your profile. Now, if you need more tips regarding your profile and optimizing it for search, we do have an episode, I believe it was probably episode number one, where I walked you through step-by-step -step how to optimize your profile for follows. So go check out that episode if you haven't yet. Step two in making sales on Instagram is to engage quickly. Now there is a lot of people don't know this 40% of consumers expect a brand to respond to them within an hour of sending a message on social media. 40%. That's almost 50%, which is almost half of everyone on Instagram or Facebook, social media in general. They expect you to reply to them within an hour. You guys have to remember like people's attention spans nowadays are like squirrel because there's so much going on. You know, we have information at our fingertips now with Google on our phone and our watches. So you have to keep your consumer or your customer in mind and make sure that you're replying to them, you're engaging with them, let them know that someone is home. Another piece of research I found while I was, you know, 
getting together this episode is that 35% of consumers state that they're more loyal to brands that reply promptly. So if you want to keep that loyal followers, keep them, you know, keep nurturing them, keep them happy, make sure you're responding to them. In addition to responding to comments on your posts, keep an eye on your direct messages as well and respond to those as soon as you can. If you don't have time, you can always assign somebody that's on your team or you could always look into DM automation. I like to use mini chat for that, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But if you are someone, maybe you have a huge following right now and you can't keep up with your DMs, implementing something like mini chat would help to talk to those people and they would think that someone's home or putting someone on your team to help with you there. At the agency here, Darby has access to my Instagram. So if I ever need her to respond to things quickly, you know, someone is there to do that. So engaging quickly is key. Engaging at all is honestly key. Like I want you guys to do it fast, but if you can't do it promptly, then at least make some time to do it at all. So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through what my engagement strategy looks like and you can take what you want from it. I don't think that you need to do this on a daily basis, but if you do, you're only gonna reap better benefits from it. Every time we post to social, there's a couple things that we do. One, we scroll through our newsfeed and leave like three comments, genuine comments, not just emojis, but we're actually saying something genuine that's maybe a sentence long about the post. So we'll go through and comment on like three posts in our feed, maybe five, three to five. Then we will go back to our post that we just posted, see if we have any comments at the time and we're gonna respond back to those people. After that, then we go back to the explore page. See, we're pretty strategic here. We go back to the explore page and then we're looking for posts on the explore page that resonate with us, that make sense for our industry. And we're gonna comment on another three posts. And then from there, we're gonna go find someone bigger in our industry and we're gonna go comment on their last post. And then finally, we reply to three to five Instagram stories. So that's a lot, that's that's five steps I just walked you guys through. Now again, I don't expect you guys to do this on a daily basis because you have other things going on, you know, work, clients, whatever you're doing at the time. I can't expect you guys to do this on a daily basis, but if you could do this like maybe three times a week, or maybe you just take one of the five steps that I talked about and you do that once once every day. Whatever works for you is kind of what I want you to implement, but I'm giving you guys my exact engagement strategy as a person with a bigger following so that you guys can you know, try it out, see if it works for you. Number three step in turning your likes into actual conversions to paying customers is to work with creators, just like me, just like you listening to this. If you're a creator, utilize this information that I'm about to tell you. 88% of people, that's almost 100%, they've been inspired by an influencer or a creator to make a purchase. So if you are a creator out there and you're trying to get work, Take that a statistic with you and stick it in the email. 88% of people have been inspired by a creator or an influencer to make a purchase. So two folds here. One is if you're the creator, you know, you can come to them at the negotiation table and talk to them about the stat I just told you. But two, like the best way to honestly tap into the sales strategy is if you're like a brand or a business who wants to work with a creator, go to your Instagram page or TikTok, whatever social media channel that you're working on and search a keyword that's in your industry with the creator after that word and just kind of see what kind of posts pop up for you. You can also just try searching the keyword of whatever your industry is too. You don't have to put creator after it, but but test both searches there and you will start to see very popular profiles pop up that are experienced in content creation. Now, for a business or a brand, I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but there's something called a UGC creator, which is user generated content. What that means is that you could send your product or maybe you do a service for someone and they're going to give you like honest feedback. They can make a video out of it. They can make a post about it, a carousel, whatever it is, but it's their user generated content and they're gonna deliver it back to you so that you can post it on your own channels. That's UGC. Then there's just like, content creators, influencers, someone like my profile where I work with brands that complement small business owners and creators, 
I can do content for them and get paid to post that. So there's a couple ways to kind of tap into the creator world out there, whether you're a business or brand or whether you're an actual creator, but it is a really good way to increase your sales on social media. Influencer marketing, UGC, creators, it's, I can't tell you what, how much it is right now, but I feel like they said it's like a billion dollar, you know, industry out there. So it's something that you definitely should research on. Doesn't matter if you're the creator or the brand. Look look into influencer marketing UGC and see what you find. Number four is utilizing stories to sell. So I've talked about this before. I think it was last episode. I talked about how your stories are where your warm leads are. They're following you already. They kind of know who you are. So it's the best place for you to sell. I love using Instagram to sell story. So got a little stat for you guys. 58% of Instagram users say they've become more interested in a brand or a business after seeing their stories. Another half visited after seeing a product or service in stories. That's crazy statistics. So you can simply show off your product, show off your service, you know, do a behind the scenes of a day in the life showing what you do to try to sell it to them. You know, those work. We, we have the stats right here telling us 58% of Instagram users have been interested in that. And then half of those people have visited the website and purchased. So use your stories to connect with your audience. They are already your warm leads. So they're more than likely going to buy from you because they kind of know who you are. They trust you. You don't have to do hard selling with them. Couple tips I have when you are selling in stories. Obviously, you're gonna wanna show your face. If at all possible, show your face. There is something about human connection that humanizes you as the brand and the person and makes them feel more comfy buying from you. You can show off your services, as I said, a day in the life, or maybe you're a content creator and you're going to do content creation that day. You know, you could just give them kind of like an agenda of what am I doing today? You can utilize stories in a genuine way to sell without selling, if you know what I mean. As long as you're kind of showing, you're you're still selling. Same with product. You know, you don't have to get on stories and show off a product like buy my cell phone case. Like, no, you could be more like, oh my God, I love this cell phone case because it's got this little hook behind it that helps me hold it. I don't drop my phone on my face when I'm sleeping or when I'm laying in bed, you know, scrolling through. There's little ways that you can sell your product without actually selling. You can also use, there's a couple things here too. I talked about mini chat a little bit at the beginning of this episode. You can choose to use the link sticker that Instagram gives you if you want to push people to your website. That's what I recommend for like smaller accounts. If you don't have the budget yet to invest in mini chat, you can use the link sticker right there on your stories when you're showing off the, that cell phone case that we were talking about or you're showing off your services. Put that little link sticker, make it easy for them to go by. If you don't want to use the link sticker and you have invested in mini chat, that's where you can set up DM automation. So instead of putting the link sticker there, you're gonna say something like, reply cell phone and I'll send you the link to buy this cell phone case. The thing with the link sticker is Instagram rolled it out to all of us. Remember when you had to have 10,000 followers to have the link sticker, but then Instagram rolled it out to everyone. And I feel like for a little bit, the link sticker was getting abused. People were using it on every slide. The algorithm, I don't think the algorithm liked that too much because it would push people off of Instagram. So in my humble opinion, I think the more that you use the link sticker, the more that you're gonna get pushed at the end of the stories lineup just because I don't think Instagram is going to want you to push people off the app. But if you were to utilize the mini chat strategy and say something like reply cell phone, then people, you're going to be getting a bunch of replies in your stories. Ding, ding, ding. The algorithm is going to see that and say, Caitlin's got this really popular story going on. All these people are DMing her. Let me keep pushing her to the front of the line. You see what I'm saying with that? Like, You have to kind of put yourself in the algorithm's brain when you are selling on social because if they know you're selling, they're not going to help you out because you're going to push them off their website. So utilize Instagram's functionalities to your advantage when you are selling. And that's the best way to do that in stories is to set up your mini chat. Now, I think what I want to do here is maybe have like a future episode on mini chat and DM automation. I know that it's not just mini chat that's out there. There's 
a couple others that will help you respond to people quickly, send comments back, send DMs back, I'll have a future episode based on all of that because I do think it's a really good strategy to put in place if you want to increase sales. I know that when I started using ManyChat, I did see a spike in sales and I think it's because I was working with the algorithm and I was giving people what they wanted without making them go to my link in bio and all that stuff. So future episodes coming on DM automation. All right, step number five to turning your followers into sales is to boost your top post. This is not talked about enough on social media, but it works. So a faster way to get results is to put money behind your content, obviously. Facebook ads, Instagram ads, they love our money, right? So if we get a client at the agency that wants to grow their followers or they just wanna, they want to get brand awareness faster, I will always recommend paid ads to them because I love organic social media. Honestly, I've built my profile off of organic posting because I'm cheap. I don't want to spend ad budget money. But if you have a goal in mind that you want to reach really fast, paid ads are the way to go. What I tell our clients, well, we do it for them, but what I'm going to tell you is if you're new to ads, the easiest way to slowly get into paid advertising is to start boosting your top performing posts, which you can do right within the Instagram app. If you don't feel comfortable doing it in there, you can always go to Meta Business Suite and they'll put you into the ads manager and you'll have more targeting options. It's a little more scary because there's so much going on in the back end of ads manager. So if you're a newbie, I would just suggest clicking that boost post button because it's gonna be way easier for you to boost the post. But if you have a little bit of experience in marketing and ads, then go ahead and use the Facebook ads manager and get in the back end so that you can do more with your ad. How to find your best post. How do you know what post you need to promote? What you can do is you can head over to your Instagram page, professional dashboard, click see all content you shared, and then you're going to see your post based on different metrics. So you can filter it out to show you your best top performing posts based on reach or best top performing posts based on shares, comments, likes, whatever it is that you want. Be able to filter out your post based on that metric. I was actually listening to Brock's podcast and he made a really good point. So for me, I'm always looking at top performing posts as like my top comments or the most people I reached. I feel like if I reached a lot of people, that means that post was working very well, resonating with people and the algorithm was serving it to more and more people. But Brock made a suggestion to run an ad based on your post that had the most shares. And I really liked his thinking on this because if people are sharing your post, it's obviously relevant to them. And the more shares you're getting, the more people you are relating to, you're hitting some kind of pain point, they're listening to you, you've got their attention so much that they want to share it with others. So if you would just like to test out boosting a post this week, go look at your top performing post, filter it by your top shared post, and go ahead and boost that. Now, this is where you need to make sure that you've nailed down your audience. And if you have not done that yet, then please go back to episode number one because I will walk you through figuring out your buyer's persona so that you can target and make content for the right people. But with boosting comes targeting and you need to understand your audience before you target willy-nilly nothing. So you're gonna wanna nail down their gender, their age, the location that they live in. Maybe you just want the United States. Maybe you want United Kingdom. Maybe you just want to target Florida. You decide on that. Depends on if you're a local business or you work all around the world. Then you can target based on age and then you can even go down into their interests. So depending on who your target audience is, if you get into their head and you can nail down like things that they like, then you're going to get an even more targeted audience. So you're going to get in front of the right people. And when you get in front of the right people and you have the right product or the right service, what are they going to do? They're going to buy from you. So boosting is the way to go if you want faster results. All right, number six of turning your follows into conversions is going to be going live on Instagram. I know people go live on TikTok too. Whichever social media channel you prefer, 
going live is the way to sell. The cool thing with going live is you are face to face right there with your target audience, your followers, and you're able to talk about your service or your product in a more intimate way. It's kind of a two way conversation when you're doing live. So like they can ask you questions right then and there. You can answer them. You're able to kind of get over those bumps. If someone has like, maybe they're not ready to purchase because they have this question, you're able to be right there and answer them to get them over that hump. Instagram lives are really good too, because most of the time it's your followers, people that are already following you. And what's cool is when you go live, they are going to notify your followers. So they're going to say, Caitlin's going live right now. So that's one that's getting you in front of your followers. So you've already got some awareness and exposure from that notification. And then two, once you get them on your live, provide value to them. Don't just go on there to sell, but maybe you go on there to teach a mini training and while you're teaching there at the end, you push your product or your service. So people kind of come into it getting value. One, you're educating them too. And then they're seeing you as an expert in your field because they're sitting there listening to you teach about it. So by the time you're ready to make that sale, it's going to be easy for you because they, they trust you. They've been on your live. So going live is definitely an underrated tool that a lot of people don't talk about, but it needs to be talked about more. It needs to be used more because it works. I've sold out a lot of my trainings. Like if I do a masterclass, I will always get on Instagram live and kind of do like a training that complements the training that I'm going to do in the future. And then so I can kind of pull those people in while they're watching my free class and then upsell them at the end to come to my masterclass where they'll learn more. So Instagram live, don't sleep on them. Okay. So before we end the episode, I have a couple bonus tips for you as far as, you know, you're getting this engagement or you're starting to see followers, but you just don't know how to convert them. You can try some of these things. So one is you need to make sure that you have a call to action on your content. You can't just be posting this educational content all the time and expecting people to buy from you when they don't even know what you're selling. So it's very important to create a clear call to action for every single post. That's where, again, mini chat can come in because if you have mini chat set up, your call to action can be something as easy as comment the word bug below and I'll send you my free bug checklist or I'll send you the link to sign up for my free bug seminar coming up, you know, something like that. Whereas if you say, hey, are you interested in bugs? Go visit the link in my bio. That still works sometimes, but it's just more work for your follower. They have to click off the post, then they have to go to your profile, then you they have to find that link in your bio, then they got to click it and it takes them off of the Instagram app. And what did I tell y'all? The algorithm does not like when you take their users from the platform. So try to think of call to actions that will still keep them on your profile. Now, say you're not a huge account. And again, you don't have the budget for mini chat. You could still say comment the word bug and then you will just manually have to go, you know, respond back to them and send them the DM with the link. So that's always an option too. You don't have to go as far as mini chat. You also want to have some kind of landing page in place when you do push these people over. So this, I mean, when I say landing page, I don't mean like, you know, five years ago, a landing page was a page on your website. When I say landing page now, I just mean something that they land on where it's clear that what they need to do next. So if you have a stand store, for example, when you are offering your services or your products, they give you basically like a landing page, but it's on your store. So when you're directing people to buy from you, just make sure you're clear on that sales page, whatever you have drawn up, make sure you're clear with what you're offering and how much it's gonna cost and what they should do next. The thing with landing pages is that they're more optimized versus just sending someone to your website and then they have to go find all this information. It's better to just send them straight to wherever you want them to go. So keep that in mind when you're selling. Another thing that I like to push to, on people too is if you do have all these followers and they're not buying from you yet, you could at least try offering a lead magnet. Now this is something free that you're gonna give to them. Maybe it's a checklist, an ebook, maybe you're giving a free quiz, whatever it is, but it's going to allow you to give that information to them for free in exchange for a piece of their information. So say that's their phone number or their email. 
Now you've captured information about your follower so that you can further on later down the road, nurture them with maybe a paid ad where you're doing retargeting and you're targeting those email addresses that you captured, or maybe you start pushing out a weekly newsletter, or maybe you do a campaign and now you have those emails so you can push that campaign on them in the emails. That's why I love lead magnets and push them on people because if people aren't ready to buy from you yet, you can at least get something from them by offering a freebie or a lead magnet. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this helps you turn your likes into paying customers. Social media is a really great tool to sell your services and your products, but you gotta do it the right way. You gotta make sure that your profiles are optimized, you're using clear call to actions, you're engaging with your people, you can run paid ads if you want to get to the finish line faster, but hopefully you are able to implement one of these strategies at least that I gave you today and you're able to turn those likes into follows and then to paying customers. I'll see you guys on another episode of Call Her Creator. Thanks for listening. And if you have the time, please go leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts. Let us know what you're thinking about this episode in this podcast or drop me a line over in the DMs. I'm on Instagram at Social Marketing Queen. Also call her creator over there. So send me a DM. Tell me what you're thinking. If you want me to focus on a certain subject next episode, I'd be glad to do that for you guys. Thanks so much. See you later.